Ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome you to Firebird International Raceway for the Coors Light World Finals of Drag Boat Racing. Drag boats, when things happen, they happen so quick, it's something that you must see to believe. And hopefully we won't have any of those situations happen today, but there's definitely going to be some super passes made on this fine facility here today, Firebird International Raceway in Chandler, Arizona. Drag boat racing, as you just see the Top Gun boat go by, it was amazing the rooster tail that these boats can kick up, the speeds they can achieve, and it's the International Hot Boat Association with their emphasis on safety. The last couple of years, they have gone leaps and bounds in that direction. They've come a long way. They came with the roll cages. Now they've got the capsules. And I'll tell you what, the exciting racing action we will see here this weekend at no doubt the premier drag boat facility in all of the world, Firebird International Raceway. asphalt quarter miles. These machines have the same inches and the alcohol categories upwards of 2,000 horsepower and they are extremely light. Then you get into the top fuel hydros. Imagine 4,000 horsepower and just floating across the top of a lake just with the prop in it and the sponsons just touching the water. It's fast, it's wild, it's exciting. You might wonder what they do it for. The money's not that great, but the excitement level that these drivers reach brings them back again and again. Stage the boats, left lane and right lane. I'm Steve Younghands with IHBA. I am the stager. What I'm doing here is actually staging the boats. They pull out here on a holding rope. I have a certain amount of boats in the left lane, a certain amount of boats in the right lane. The two boats closest to the staging barge are actually the boats that are making the pass. What they do is they watch the Christmas tree. They have a flashing amber light. It'll flash approximately 15 seconds, at which time it will go solid amber. That is their cue to acknowledge one another, look at each other, leave the rope together. At that point, they idle to the pairing buoys that are just in front of the staging barge. They must be paired within those buoys, meaning they are within one boat length of each other. When the lead boat gets to the second buoy, the trailing boat must be to the first buoy. If he is not, he is disqualified for not pairing. The pairing buoys actually start the countdown on the Christmas tree. Midway, talking to some of the fans and seeing what they think about championship drag boat racing. Just trying to control that much horsepower is amazing. Uh, they just bring the adrenaline up. Oh, that's thrilling. Yeah, they're just. It's a it's a great party weekend. I've never had a better weekend. This is my first time here. My experience has been great. Uh, make my blood pressure go up. No, no, no. no. Beer is just right there. We're right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Party party one. It's uh, it's definitely exciting, you know, 200 mile an hour boats. What do you think? Well, there you go. Awesome. You awesome. Get the motor right there. Number, number one starting line. Boat racing is happening. If you like, most races you have to have constant action to keep the people in the stands entertained. Well, boat racing takes too much time for that, but it's the whole thing's happening. People just come to be here. drag boat's name is Madness. This is a drag boat that is reaching speeds of an excess of 218 miles an hour 
and gone a quarter of a mile on water in almost less than five seconds. I'm Ron Broxman. I drive one of the fastest drag boats in the world. It's called Top Fuel Hydro. Before the safety capsule innovation, crashes and fatality rates were extremely high in top fuel drag boat racing. These safety capsules protect the drivers under any circumstance such as a crash, fire, so forth like that. The sport is really becoming one of the safer sports and most exciting sports of racing. My name is Dean Kirchner. I'm the owner driver of Blown Crazy Blown Alcohol Hydroplane. Uh, boats are capable in this class of 200 miles per hour. We run on alcohol for fuel. This particular engine is an Arius Hemi Chevrolet with 541 cubic inches with a 1471 Mooningham blower on it. And this particular boat has a two speed Linko transmission in it, and at about near doing 195 in the quarter, we'll shift it about 140 into second gear, and when that left sponson picks up, it doesn't quite like it. When you pull the parachute on this down through the shutdown area, it's quite a bit different than a car. The parachute, instead of grabbing air, grabs water, and the, the impact is very dramatic. You're also not strapped into these boats. You just sit in it like you would in your ski boat, so you have to be holding on real tight and ready for that impact and be stressing yourself. If you're at all loose or anything, you can come out of the seat and you're up on the dash. these day boats they're outstanding I love it it's great it's exciting the speed I love speed yeah power
Bill Farler. I am the uh, owner of Lifeline Rain Safety Equipment. What I have here in my hands is a Lifeline parachute jacket. And what this is, is that this, there's a 12-foot parachute in here that's a deceleration device and slows down the driver when he has an accident situation. Down here is a ring that is a kill switch ring. All these race boats here have to have a kill switch so if the driver's thrown from the boat, the motor will stop running. This parachute deploys in an accident situation and slows the driver down and decelerates them and puts them feet first, face up, safely into the water. What we have here is what is called a static line. This static line, when the driver gets in the boat, hooks up to the boat. In case of an accident, the driver's thrown from the race boat, this static line actually pulls out a 12-foot parachute. This is all done within one second from the time the man leaves the bucket seat. top fuel hydros these are nitromethane fuel running motors just like the funny car or top fuel dragster uh, these are capable of running 220 230 230 miles an hour and a quarter mile on the water uh, the year before the boat drivers that we lost were mainly in the top fuel class but they have since, as you can see, they've, they've modernized them, they've made them safer, they have capsules, they also have a breakaway roll cage where the driver is protected. If the, something happens to the boat, the boat breaks up, the driver is uh, on oxygen if he goes underwater, but they're made to, to uh, come back up to the surface and right themselves where the driver will be out of the water. Okay, let's do it, right lane thing. Okay, Ron, light it. Next boat up is Freddie Bray's out of Texas. It is basically, I think, one of the safest boats in the sport in top fuel. The driver has oxygen. He has a locating buoy. If the boat breaks up, he goes underwater. A cable deploys automatically. It has a red dye that marks the spot where he's at. It also has a buoy that deploys and it helps float the capsule if for some whatever reason it's underwater and it doesn't come up. Uh, he has 20 minutes of oxygen. Uh, his driving suit is completely contained, such as a uh, space capsule or space suit in the uh, shuttles. His whole body is sealed, helmet, everything, and hooked to oxygen.
point hydroplane that is powered by a blown fuel engine that runs on a special blend of nitromethane and other space age additives that produce nearly 4,000 horsepower in a drag boat that will reach incredible speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour in every duel. This boat is equipped with a safety capsule, which is made out of three layers of Kevlar, which is bulletproof material. It has a windshield on it off of an F-14 fighter. We finally come up with safety developments now to try to protect the driver at such speeds. This boat is capable of 230 miles an hour in less than five seconds. Drag boat racing is a family-oriented sport with countless hours spent creating these gorgeous machines and each boat reflects a personality as unique as its builder. Striking colors, high-tech hardware and mechanical savvy are combined to meet the challenges of the liquid quarter mile. Each racer strives to find the perfect balance of power, control and speed. To reach this delicate compromise, some racers turn to intricate fuel systems, while others rely on homemade power plants. There are many different classes in the International Hot Boat Association, flat bottom boats, blown alcohol hydros, jet boats, and a host of stock categories. Among the heaviest hitters in the top fuel class is Ron Broxma, a world champion driver and the fastest and quickest racer in the sport. In the pits, you'll find pretty showboats with their multicolored paint schemes, intricate pinstriping, and striking graphic designs. Some of these classy craft would look more at home in a custom car show than on the water in heated competition. Other boats, such as the Top Gun and Hydro Fever, depend on the brute power of their engines. 2,000 horsepower power plants that can send a rooster tail of water soaring 40 feet into the air. As striking as the flashy paint schemes are the boat's individualistic nicknames, such as the Blown Crazy, Madness, The Animal, and the You Move Me. Jet boats create thrust by pumping huge amounts of water through a nozzle. This used to be one of the scariest classes of competition because when the motor quit or the pump failed, the boat would make a violent turn to the right or left, spinning the driver into the water. A pop-off valve was created to compensate for this danger. It released the pressure and keeps the boat going in a straight line. Like most capsule boats, the final effort emulates F-16 technology with its bubble canopy. If an accident occurs, the capsule driver can safely stay with the boat, relying on a 20-minute supply of oxygen if needed. Tom Black, upon entering the cockpit, first checks the fit of his mask to make sure the oxygen is flowing. He hits the starter switch on the floor, makes sure the fuel shutoff is up, flips the mag switch, and depresses the high-speed button on the steering wheel. Finally, he makes sure the parachute handles are ready to be released. for the race, it's a short ride to the launching pad, where each racer waits his turn to be lowered into the lake. The unloading process is quick and highly organized. Once 
Once the mechanical preparations are completed, the drivers must ready themselves for the coming challenge. The second spent waiting in line can be the most stressful for the water warriors who wait impatiently for the rush of rushes. That moment when the G-forces pin them against their seats and they feel the exhilaration of acceleration that gives them the reason for racing. At the in-ramp, the driver is separated from his landbound crew and is united with the boat and water. After the preparations are completed, the driver can only hope that every detail is right. Even a minor mistake or failure can cost a racer this important run. Before staging the fire-breathing mechanical monster, the driver must make sure the parachute handles are in the up position, the fire suppression system is on, and oxygen is flowing through the mask. When the oil pressure is checked and the temperature hits 220, the driver will batten down the hatch for perhaps the ride of his life. be fun because I've been doing it for 20 years. It's a fun sport. <laughs> <laughs> Something to do on a weekend. <laughs>